So today, temperatures in the village are down to minus five at night and during the snow yesterday, we had a power cut. If you have an online job and depend on the electric and the internet, then for those awkward times when the power is out, a generator might be the answer. We have a federal power Chinese-made generator. It didn't come with a battery, but we had one fitted so that we could start it up easily. This video shows you how we set up our generator and how we connect it up to the house. It is only used for emergencies, so we didn't go through the expense of having it wired into the whole of the house. So, firstly we built a brick housing for the generator. The side door comes off and a gap was left above it for ventilation. There's also a vent in the side wall near the generator exhaust. The front door panel comes off easily for access but protects it from the weather when it's not being used. Although the fuel tank is always kept full, we have a 20 litre jerry can full of fuel which we keep in our outbuilding. Our generator is petrol and not diesel. It cost us around £250 or roughly 320 US dollars. So let's start the generator. There is a set system for starting it up. Firstly turn on the fuel tap and set the choke lever to the on position. Turn the units on and off switch to the on position and then use the ignition to start it. Once started, turn the choke off straight away and the generator is up and running. Inside the housing, the unit is also kept covered in plastic with a heavy rubber mat on top to make sure that the damp or rain can't get to it. It's well protected from the elements. The unit is also far enough away from the house so that from indoors it can hardly be heard. Having it housed in a small bunker like this cuts down on the noise. So having plugged in the electric cables to the input plugs which lead to the sockets in the house, we now have to plug them into the unit. You can see here that there are two waterproof sockets that connect to the outgoing electric to sockets in our living room and office. We can run our TV, lights, computer, internet and a small electric fire comfortably off this generator. The battery is a motorcycle battery and it's 12 volts. Ideally, in order to keep your generator in good working order, I would suggest that you start it up every couple of weeks in the winter and at least once a month in summer. I have found that this helps provide for a good reliable service from the unit. It starts up easily and has so far proven to be very reliable. The unit's currently two years old. Our village doesn't get a lot of electric cuts, but in severe weather conditions such as wind, snow or heavy rain, it can get cut off. It seldom gets cut off for long, which is why a generator suits us. We also have a small 800 watt portable generator uh, in case this unit fails. At least it would enable us to use the computer and the internet and, and for me to continue working if nothing else. The unit you see here is a federal power 3.1 kilowatt double socket output unit. On a full tank of fuel it can last around 8 to 10 hours. The fuel tank holds just under 2 gallons or approximately 8 litres of fuel.
If your internet connection is as important to you as it is to us, then we have a backup system for that too. Our incoming phone line and internet is via a cable which comes straight from the post to the house through our pine tree. It works well most of the time, but for those occasions when there might be a problem, we have a small wireless unit, or dongle, or whatever you want to call it, that provides us with a further 20 gigabytes of internet for those situations that crop up or when normal service fails. A unit like this is also very useful whilst travelling since it works everywhere and is portable. We hope you liked the video. As soon as the weather improves, we'll be travelling again and we hope to get back to our sightseeing videos. In the meantime, thanks for watching.